Hi everybody, we are live and Michael from Europace and we would like to talk about Sociocracy in an Agile world. Here you see a brief uh, overview of what you could expect in the next minutes. Uh, we are an Agile software development team and almost three years ago we found ourselves out of three different teams and uh, since that we, we grow a lot and our learnings we would like to share and we have some takeaways for people who are Agile or sociocrats or people who are looking for self-organized organizations. But first we want to take a look at what Agile is. Yeah, to understand Agile, maybe it's good to have a look at these four areas uh, that are pictured on the slide. The first one is the visibility. Um, in Agile you have the aim to always have a running version of your software product. So you always have the visibility at a high level. Um, on the other hand, if you compare it to traditional software development, you usually uh, get a running product after, I don't know, like two or three years. Um, one thing that is really important in agile development is that you do incremental steps, which also increases the adaptability of your software. Uh, from the beginning on, you are um, doing these little steps and you are more likely to order your software afterwards which also um, results um, from the uh, deep contact you have with the customer. You always try after, certain, uh, after little steps, you try to um, reach out to your customer and uh, check or challenge your software with him. So you're more able to integrate new changes that come. The next area I want to look at is the business value. And since you have a running product from the beginning on, something that you can see and maybe take hands on, the business value increases immediately. You have something to show from the beginning on. On the other hand, in traditional software development, as I already said, like after two or three years, you have the first thing, you or the first part of software that you can really show to someone and you have the um, business value very late in this process. On the other hand, if you have a look at the risk, you can really reduce the risk since you have, again, a running piece of software very early in the stage and you can challenge this piece of software with the customer and you can, by getting his feedback, uh, can integrate uh, the needs of the customer and maybe the market and so you immediately, immediately reduce the risk. So that's why we, we love Agile and we use it so much. However, um, Agile works only perfect for teams uh, with about seven plus minus two people. If you grow bigger, you have limited approaches in Agile that can handle the upcoming problems. However, as I said, they are limited. And like I already told you that we are a team that grew um, in size as well as in accountability. Before we were part of a whole and now we are accountable for the whole. So. There are certain different problems that uh, cannot or are, are hard to address with agile approaches. So we looked for new systems that helped us to manage these problems and one of them was sociocracy and Life's now going to tell you why we stuck with sociocracy. Yeah, here is our why we love sociocracy slide. Uh, we, we take some, some key points for us uh, out uh, and here they are. First of all, uh, sociocracy is a human system and uh, we, we really appreciate that, that uh, the human is yeah, uh, de facto built in to the system. And next, we think that the purpose hierarchy you have in a, a sociocratic organization um, is fundamental because it gives you alignment and autonomy. And um, all with these both uh, in place, uh, you can, can achieve your, your goals. If you have just one of them, uh, it's, it's not good. So uh, sociocracy is really great uh, to foster both of these uh, two. And the mechanics uh, that are built in into sociocracy or the, the basic elements are very uh, uh, um, reproducible. So uh, it's very dynamic and organic, uh, the system, so that you can handle growth uh, yeah, quite easily uh, with the sociocratic system. Uh, the next two uh, bullets 
are very deep in our point of view, good enough for now and safe enough to try. Uh, yeah, seems like simple words, but uh, they, they are going very deep because um, these principles uh, intend to um, yeah, to make small steps to learn while you you walk and um, don't uh, or to don't hesitate too long and try to think about the perfect step. So it's um, is it safe enough to do something? Then do it. Yeah, and this uh, uh, concept and this principle behind that is very similar to to the agile uh, principle of being incremental. And this is very great to have a, in an organizational perspective as well. Um, what, you all, what we also appreciate is the uh, the decision model consent. Uh, we see that consent gives you much faster and much better decisions compared to, uh, for example, consents where you try to yeah, have all uh, vote for uh, the same thing. And with consent, it's really that you hear everybody's voice, but it's not necessary that everybody is for this kind of solution. So it's really um, uh, take uh, really worth a, a second look. And overall, uh, transparency is also um, what, what Michael said uh, in the previous slide, um, very important in the agile um, yeah, community. And if you have also organizations which are transparent, then it's very uh, near to us. And this is also something we really like. And with transparency, you, you build trust. Uh, and this is very great. And we, we like this one. So, yeah, to, to, to sum it up, there are a lot of similarities between sociocracy and agile in our point of view. And basically from the mindset and from the principles, these two systems are very near, but they, uh, their contexts are different. Sociocracy is more for the organization and agile is more for software development. And uh, nevertheless, both can uh, participate from it, each other and learn from each other. So. That, it, that we think um, yeah, both contexts uh, can uh, take something uh, from the other context. And what this is, uh, we, we will present you now. Yeah, for example, if you are in the context of an agilist, um, there are certain mechanics you can adapt from sociocracy that are uh, consent and rounds, and you try to separate discussions and decisions. These are quite easy and simple mechanisms However, they have a huge impact on how your meetings will be led and how you work. Um, we found them really, really valuable for us and, yeah, as I said, they are quite easy to implement. And um, if you want to go a step further, so if you not only want to have an agile team but an agile organization, you should really try out sociocracy for that. Um, it's only a small step from an agile team to that. On the other hand, if you're in a sociocratic context, we can recommend um, patterns like retrospectives, where you try to look in the past and learn from it to improve your processes and doings in the future. Um, something that's also valuable is uh, to limit your work in progress, so you're not working on too many things at the same time and you're more focused and maybe more productive that way. Um, something that goes hand in hand with that is to visualize your work um, so that you see yourself what uh, you're doing right now and what needs to be done next. Um, this enables you to uh, prioritize your next tasks a little bit better and it also contributes to transparency. So if you visualize your work, others are also able to see what you're doing right now, what are your next steps and they can um, plan their uh, own stories or tasks better. Um, there is a framework called Sociocracy 3.0 or S3, which tries to combine uh, sociocracy and agile, and you also have these patterns uh, within this framework. And if you are in a sociocratic context, we really recommend you to check this one out. And for the people who are interested in self-organized organizations, um, the situation we are right in. Uh, we have also some, some uh, yeah, tips, some, some takeaways. 
Um, we think that, that it's very valuable to have a, a kind of playbook. Uh, what we mean by that? Uh, it's very important to, to be clear or to, to have a clear uh, or to have clarity. Uh, and it's, it's important that the people know the system, how it works, how they should work, how they could inter interact. And therefore, we think it's very uh, useful to advise and teach your people. Um, we, for example, have an internal, internal group of interest where we have uh, built our knowledge and then spread it like a kind of internal consultants uh, to our teammates. And something like that is very uh, valuable uh, so that everybody feels safe uh, to interact in this organization. What we also could recommend strongly is the, the book from Sociocracy for All, uh, Many Voices, One Song. Um, this is a really deep uh, yeah, uh, write together or write up from from a lot of stories, from a lot of examples uh, around sociocracy and um, this is really a good read and could give you uh, a good overview and uh, a good understanding of uh, what's, what sociocracy is all about and how you could apply it in your context. We uh, at our journey also made, made some learnings and our learnings uh, we also put together into a, a blog post. Uh, our do's and don'ts regarding self-organization could be found uh, if you press this uh, or if you uh, open this URL uh, below and there we, we share our learnings and um, we like to share uh, not just by writing blog posts, we also like to share uh, our learnings uh, if you get in contact with us. Uh, to, to sum it up, we are um, a team of 27 people who are uh, using sociocracy uh, to, to organize themselves and uh, our company uh, around us is about 150 people strong and is using holacracy so we are uh, yeah we know both systems sociocracy and uh, holacracy and we we, we use it uh, simultaneously so if you are interested in either or of these topics uh, yeah, feel free to contact us uh, we like to, to share, we like to talk about it, and um, yeah, let's, let's see. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.